Welcome back to the symposium. I'm Nettin Fancy. I'm going over my level two first aid kit. This is part four. Told you this would be a big project, and indeed it is. It takes a lot of work putting together, but I think it'll answer some questions. And for what it's worth, it's sharing my philosophy and kind of where I'm at with a level two POU. This brings us to scissors. And this is a pair I recommend, but before I get into that, let me show you what most kits and most first aid users recommend. EMT shears. Here I go again, breaking with conventional wisdom. Conventional wisdom says these are the ones you want to, you want to put in a first aid or medical kit. In fact, I know there's EMTs that use these, there's paramedics that use them. Personally, I've used them for a number of years, going way back, all the way to the 1980s, and I think they suck. In fact, I've had them uh, bend on me several times and let me down when I needed them the most. The reason why I think they suck, at least most of the pairs that I've seen, I put a piece of white sh uh, sheet of white paper behind so you can focus on them, is because they are very low quality, all the ones that I've seen. There might be some high quality ones out there, I ain't seen them yet. This particular pair is made in Pakistan, some are made in China, and they're all made out of stamped metal. Uh, and it's a soft metal. It's not anything uh, that's impressive. They have a serrated bottom, a blunt tip, you know, supposedly so they can uh, cut through clothing without injuring the patient. I understand that. Offset handle. The design itself is actually pretty good. Um, however, I just don't like the materials and the workmanship on them. And like I said, these jaws have bent on me. So they've bent uh, apart under hard use. Uh, I actually was trying to take a, a, some jeans off a guy that had a break, and I just threw them away. I said, never again will I use EMT shears. They just blow. They've let me down. Now, here's some medical scissors. This is what a lot of people will put in their kits. They're heavy, though. They're 100% steel. Okay, they're chrome plated. Uh, they got that blunt bottom to them, so again, they can supposedly take, uh, take off a bandage next to the skin without injuring the patient. Uh, and also maybe some clothing. However, they have very short jaws. See how short those jaws are? And once they're dull, they, well, I shouldn't say once they're dull, they go dull very quickly in my experience. Uh, not sure what steel they use, but again, I don't think the quality level is really high on these. Again, they're kind of heavy. For the same weight, and there's some other scissors, op scissor options out there, but I'll show you what I like. For the same weight, I will go with these you can see the difference in size and the difference in cutting capability between these two scissors. And yes, these are just a general pair of Fiskars sewing or general purpose, uh, general purpose scissors. I love them. And I've never been let down by these in a first aid scenario. They're awesome. I know, that's not conventional wisdom, right? You shouldn't take sewing scissors in your first aid kit. What are you, ridiculous? You know, that's what some dudes will say. It's because they've never used these. These are machined steel scissors that will not flex and come out of alignment like those EMT shears will. They're adjustable on the pivot point, and they remain sharp for a long time, and they're just durable. They produce a nice, clean, and long cut. Why is long a long cut important? Well, back to our medical tape, remember we could transform this into some steri strips to close a large gaping wound. You want something that can go a long cut and long straight preferably so you do a nice clean wound dressing. You need good scissors to produce that. Now granted they're not blunted on the bottom jaw. However you can see they're not razor sharp either. Where's that piece of paper? And if they're not razor sharp then you can slip it underneath a bandage carefully and not cut the patient. Then they're done it. It's not a big deal. You can also use it to cut through gene material. These will slice through it no problem. They're very sharp. I always put a date on mine, and that's how I track how much use the scissor, uh, that pair of scissors has been through. And yes, I will sharpen them as well. These are quality enough that you can sharpen them. Fiskars General Purpose Scissors. Highly recommended. You don't have to go with the Fiskars brand, by the way. You could go with, I don't know, this pair, Westcott. Uh, same concept, machine jaws, sharp. This one, particular one is offset, very similar to some EMT, the EMT shear, shears. You can see the 45 or so degree angle. That might make it easier to use 
to take bandages off when you're doing bandage exchanges. So there's my recommended pair, and they're very, they're not much heavier. Actually, they're about the same weight, believe it or not, as these medical scissors. That brings us to the pharmaceutical section of the level two first aid kit. I call it the pharmacy. This is where all the meds are going to be stored. First off, it, and here's a something that a lot of guys wouldn't think of. However, I found it to be extremely useful on the trail. Salt. That's right, general salt. These are just packets I got from the restaurant. And there's the restaurant there. Thank you, McDonald's. Salt. I've had several people on the trail over the years, despite my uh, very laborious recommendations, to drink a lot of water while they're hiking totally blow me off. Teenager varieties. Are you guys surprised? Um, I say, guys, drink up. We're hiking. You're going to regret it if you don't drink. And uh, they don't. And I've had two of them pass out on me. The way I treat that is I'll give them lots of water and then one of these salt packets. And that brings them to. Because they've lost some salt. They haven't replaced it. Um, and ideally Gatorade or something along those lines would be another great way to do it. They have some mixes. Ah, I should have included one of those too. Um, the mixes are kind of like a crystal light, uh, electrolyte mix that you can use. Also a great way to bring someone back who's fainted due to dehydration. Have salt. What's that? What else is in here? Well, we're going to get into a lot of variety, maybe some controversy on what's included in your own pharmacy. I keep it rather simple. Um, first off, I want to have some Advil. Again, you see the labeling of the medicines there. And these are gel caps, and that's the date on them. Okay, and they're probably out of expiration already. Again, I think they'll go well beyond their expiration date and these are about due for a rotation into the home pharmacy and then I'll sub in some fresher ones into the kit. Advil are great. Uh, I had a knee surgery, actually I've had multiple knee surgeries, there's a little secret for you. Uh, my right knee is actually horrible. I continue to hike and be active with it but I have issues. And during the recuperation phase uh, they gave me these, Percocet. Narcotic pain reliever. These ones date way back. They're probably not even effective. They're so old. Uh, but I don't make it a habit to go get narcotic pain relievers constantly. So they're still in the kit. Uh, I will tell you, I do not like Percocet. I don't like Tylenol 3. I don't dig them. I don't like the way they made, made me feel in the recuperation. I just don't recommend them. When I was recovering from a knee surgery, I took Advil. And I found it did more to take away the pain. This sounds like an Advil commercial, doesn't it? Um, to, did more to take away the pain than you know these buzz meds that just give you a buzz and supposedly make you not care. Don't dig it. Why do I have these? Well, granted they're old, but they still may have some effectiveness and there may be something happening out there or wherever this kit may find itself uh, and the dude or the dudette is in severe pain and Percocet might be the only, only uh, thing that I have. It's the heaviest thing I have. Now, a word of caution. We're getting into a realm of liability, and these are basically meant for my own family. Uh, I would never administer these to someone that wasn't in my family, pretty much, unless a really close friend, and I knew they didn't have any drug allergies. You can kind of get in a whole realm of trouble when you start throwing meds, non-common medications, at an individual. You with me? So I'm real hesitant to say, yeah, put Percocet, put Tylenol 3 in your kit. Um, I think it's a good option to have, and this is my kit, so I can put whatever I want in it. Um, however, I'm going to do it with a big old asterisk next to there, use with extreme care. Um, especially these are addictive. That's what that word narcotic means. Um, so you might have an individual that uh, trips out on them, and who knows what will transpire after that. It's just uh, like a plan C for me. Instead, I rely mostly on these, the Advil and the extra strength Tylenol. These have been very effective at taking away pain. You can see I have a fair amount of them. Why is that? I use a fair amount on the trail of these common pain medications. As we're going down the trail, I mean, you know, people get sore, they get bumped, bruised, banged up. Um, it's all, it happens every trip, and these are a great way to alleviate minor aches and pains, even perhaps more than minor aches and pains on the trail. And again, this is brigade level, so I'm serving potentially a lot of people, so i got to have about that amount. 
I don't know if there's any difference, by the way, on expiration between the gel caps and the solid Advil. I don't think there is. I think I've checked that, and it's about the same expiration. I like the gel caps, though, because they tend to dissolve quicker. You can make a case that, hey, you could crush these and pop them in the roll-up of the Black Hawk Med Kit. Um, I haven't found that to be the case yet, but it could happen. Okay, so a little philosophy on the pain meds. Something I don't have that I need to put in there are antibiotics. Okay, but this gets into some more philosophy. Everything I'm showing you dudes and dudettes is a rule of law first aid kit. The whole idea behind this first aid kit is to get the pa stabilize the patient and get them to proper care facilities. And someone who has a lot more exp expertise than I do. Okay, that's the idea behind this particular level 2 med kit. Sorry for the jitteriness of that. Um, as such, I don't see a big need to put in antibiotics into this kit right now with that POU. However, if we want to make it a WROL kit, i.e. without rule of law, we have no support, we may be the only doctors or people that can provide medical attention to these individuals, we need to put in antibiotics. Now, I've kind of downplayed the importance of swapping out your meds, you know, like there's no 7 med there. When it comes to antibiotics, I do not say that. You want your antibiotics definitely swapped out. I wish I had some here to show you. I have some, you know, in the family cabinet. I just haven't included them yet. Um, but you want to keep those fresh. To be effective, those antibiotics need to stay within their expiration date. I know that's kind of a double standard, but it's important for them to be effective against the infection, which they are going to be fighting. You want them fresh. You want them fresh for the big game so they can make a touchdown for you. Dig? So, antibiotics, you betcha. For ROL, eh, you could probably leave it out. Um, because I hope to get them down. If it was something that gnarly, I'm going to extract that person as quick as possible. Uh, you know, raw situation, WROL, different. Might have to be uh, dealing with it myself. Here's Lopramide, 2 milligram. I'll tell you, man, if you get diarrhea up there, not funny. Nope, not funny. Uh, yeah, a lot of diarrhea jokes, you know, it's a crappy deal if you get it. No pun intended. Um, and these are great. These are Lopramide, 2 milligram. There's a date on them. Uh, pop these and take a lot of water when you do. And they work wonders. If you don't have Lopramide, you probably will end up regretting it. There's some other anti-diarrhea meds that you can use, but those are my favorites. Digging in here, a couple antacid tablets. These are heavy. That's why I don't have a lot. You know, what do I got there? Like seven of them. Um, antacid tablets kind of along the comfort line but if someone has a you know reflux problem up there it, it could be bad again we if we can do it we'll put a few comfort items in here as well these aren't life-saving they're comfort okay so that's not a lot uh, of pharmaceutical capability but again it's a level two kit this is not a paramedic level kit nor is it a hospital so pick and choose now along with if you have certain issues um, you know, take obviously the meds that you're on. If you have, I don't know, Coumadin or something that you're taking daily, you should have that included into your kit. And if it's an important medication, kind of like antibiotics, you will probably have to keep that particular one up to date. Digging further into the pharmaceutical section, wound closure, super glue, bam! Great idea, cheap, and it works. Another way to close a wound. Again, we've stopped the bleeding, we've cleaned and disinfected the wound, and this would be a way to keep the skin together. This is actually crazy glue, and it's vended. Uh, I think I bought these, take a guess, Walmart, that's right. I bought these crazy glue single-use tubes at Walmart, and they come individually packed, and then I put them in a plastic bag. Why is that? Not for waterproofness, it's because if they breach and squirt glue all over, I don't want it in my kit dig so there you have it in a little mini plastic bag another way to close a wound here's a thermometer in here I'm not going to take it out oral variety or uh, <coughs> anal if you desire I guess that would be what the alcohol pads are for uh, but yeah you would have to know if someone's running a fever and it's not too heavy tape that lid closed if you don't tape it closed the thing's going to go flying out it's going to get tweaked and it's going to put mercury inside your kit. Not cool. Cotton balls. Great application device. It's funny that I actually labeled that. 
cotton balls. Who wouldn't know those are cotton balls? Actually, surprisingly, a lot of people. Remember, if someone else gets into this kit, they're probably going to be stressed, and they may think, uh, I don't know, is that gauze? I don't know. That's why I label it. Yeah, it's obvious to you and I right now uh, on tabletop, but maybe not so much when we get out and out of doors. That's it. That's the pharmacy section. Add and delete as necessary as you see fit for your own needs. This brings us to the CPR shield. You know, I want to save lives, but don't really want to suck and vomit when I do it. Yeah, so here's a CPR shield. Micro shield, it's called. Yeah, it's pretty compact, pretty easy to use. I know EMTs, paramedics have devices like this, more advanced. Very compact, though. See, so it's not going to break the bank in size or weight to do it. We spent a lot of time talking about stopping blood and, you know, the ABC is the first aid, airway, breathing, circulation. This would be for the B, breathing, in case you have to administer CPR and get someone's heart started again. Um, you don't need it, but you know what? I'd like to use it just in case they respirate uh, right into your mouth when they come to you. Gross. Happens all the time. What's this? This is our, These are Band-Aids. Big stick-ons and more neosporin. There's a lot in this kit. Basically, uh, let's talk about Band-Aid philosophy. <laughs> oh, five minutes on Band-Aid philosophy. That's hilarious. Uh, I like Band-Aid brand. How's that for some philosophy? Uh, I've used all kinds, and you'll see some other ones. Here's a Nexcare brand I've used. I've actually had pretty good luck with Nexcare Band-Aids. They stick pretty good, but they're smaller, at least compared to these. It's going to be more to buy Band-Aid brand, but uh, that's kind of what they do, and they're really good at it. Uh, spend the extra money if you have a choice. These are the fabric heavy-duty style Band-Aids, and, and they will probably fix up 90% of the wounds that you're going to experience up in the out-of-doors. They will. Uh, that's been my experience. I don't have to go into these big old gauze sponges and break the tape out always. A lot of times, these Band-Aids function just fine, but if the wound is bigger, then I might go with a self-adhesive type 3M brand or whatever brand you want uh, bandage. There's a self-adhesive one. It has that Telfa pad on there, that semi-non-adherent pad. You saw some safety pins in there. That's a great way to secure the ACE bandage if you lose the clips. Those are about how many that I take. These are single-use Neosporin containers. I know I have a whole tube. I showed you that in previous section sections and if I were to take that tube out, there's a neosporin tube right there for weight, then I still have single use neosporin containers. Be careful, these will breach on you and they'll squirt all over the place if they're pressured too much. Yet another reason why why they also are in a plastic bag. Here's some triple antibiotics, same thing as neosporin. I have a lot of that because it's so useful. I use it a lot. It's a great way once you disinfect the wound to get the healing process started. And that's assuming, of course, that I'm not applying and using Tegaderm. Uh, and more Band-Aids here. Lots of Band-Aids. Again, brigade level, I need some depth on it. And so we have some medium size bandages, Band-Aids, and Neosporin in that container. This is something I've just started putting in. It's Gold Bond Wipes. You can see what it says it does. I haven't even tried it yet, but I think it might be good. Again, this is kind of getting into the comfort section of the kit. I can't speak, sorry. And then, of course, every kit needs a razor blade. Again, your knife is probably pretty sharp, right? No, it's not. Every time I check someone's knife and I say, hey, let me see the edge on your knife, uh, I'm very unimpressed with how sharp it is. Uh, you know me, nothing fancy. I keep my knives pretty sharp. I don't know if I can say they're always razor sharp, though. A razor blade is necessary, again, if you have to remove some tissue. Um, you got to do what you got to do. Have a nice razor blade ready to go. I'm not too worried about disinfecting it because I have alcohol pads. And I recommend this brand. Hmm, I even have philosophy on alcohol pads. It goes something like this. See how thin these are? These are just generic pads I got from various sources. They blow. They're very thin. They're made definitely for single use. Most alcohol pads are actually made for uh, injections for people like uh, diabetics who are injecting themselves with insulin and stuff. You know, that's what alcohol pads are made for. The B&D ones are the best that I have found. They're thick. They have a lot more alcohol on them. And they actually have more stain power. 
they're my favorite. And that's how we're going to sterilize instruments with our alcohol swabs, whether it be scissors, that needle I showed you in previous one, uh, iterations, um, the razor blade, any instrument that needs to be sterilized, we can do it with an alcohol swab. Uh, for minor uh, cuts and scratches, I've used that too. I know it stings, but kills the cooties, definitely. Here's some more provodyne, iodine pads. Same concept as these alcohol pads. Uh, be advised, anytime you put a pad in your level 2 kit, you may experience dry out. You know what I'm saying? Uh, let me see if I have an example of that. Okay, here's an old chloride antiseptic wipe. It's probably about 12 years old. Let's open it up. And it's slightly moist, slightly moist. Uh, I don't like these, by the way. I thought they were the bomb when I first got them. Then I started using them. I was like, you know what? These blow. I mean, they're so tiny. It's like one of those stupid towelettes you get at KFC. You know, after you get at KFC, you, you spread this thing out. You're like, man, that's like a full-on napkin. Nope. And they don't have much juice to them either. They, I mean, like one wipe, and they're dried out. So don't like them. I'd much prefer these. That's what I use. But be careful. Check them once in a while. They can get squashed and you open up your pad and there's nothing there. It's all dried out. Happens all the time. This can also happen to those Benzwing tincture swabs. Um, since they have kind of a bulb on the end of, them, end of them for the iodine, that bulb can break and breach just like this one did. That's why in my med kit they're writing in their own pouch. Because if that happens, uh, they won't infect anything else and also if I stack other things in the pouch on top of them it's putting more pressure on the vessel inside there that contains iodine and it can snap and then you have something that's un that, you know not useful by the way these are the disinfectant I kinda spoke to these as being the only way to adhere that tegaderm not true these are also great for just ster overall skin sterilization and wound sterilization if I'm not mistaken and that brings us to next section. Told you we're making progress. Right here. Does this look familiar to you, TM Peers? It should, because this is a Streamlight Stylus Pro. You'll see in an annotation. Pre previously reviewed in the Nut and Fancy Project. It's one of my favorite overall lights. And if I turn it on, it won't come on. Why is that? It's because I unscrew the cap. If you don't unscrew the cap, guys, you're going to accidentally actuate that switch. It's going to stay on. You won't know it. You're going to come to use it. Nothing happens. Okay, so unscrew the end cap switch and then, of course, screw it down when you need it. And also, in my first aid kit, I'm running lithium batteries for this light. Worth the cost because this is a long-term light, so it's worth going with the AAA lithium in this particular application. Now, let's talk about lights. I won't spend too much time on this. It's real easy to get fooled into those stupid pen lights that they market for first aid kits. You know which ones I'm talking about. Um, don't go with that. A light is a tr critical tool within, tool within your first aid kit, in my opinion. Uh, you need to see what you're doing. Maybe it's identifying a foreign body that's embedded itself in the skin, like we've talked about in other sections of the seminar, so to speak. Uh, the Streamlight Stylus Pro is an outstanding single function light. And again, the single function, I mean, you just click on, click off. You don't have a bunch of little modes you have to fool around with, and it's also very narrow. You could go with some other versions of the Stylus. Uh, you know, the Stylus Pro is my favorite, and I talked about it in my review if you want to check that video out. Great light, have a good flashlight in your first aid kit. And again, that's a little redundant because if we're hiking, or going on adventures, we probably have some illumination tools in other parts of our kit. But getting back to the philosophy, we want our first aid kit to be completely self-contained. We don't want to be running around the campsite or wherever we're at trying to find the flashlight. Have it where you need it. And it's not that heavy, two ounces. It's worth the wait. Here's a suturing kit. Not going to break it open. And then you see some extra scalpels in there. Why in there too? Because the suturing kit, I kind of want to be self-contained into itself. But I can grab this, and I have most of the things that I'll need to do a suturing job. I'm not the medical expert, like I've said. I feel relatively confident that if I had to, I could do a suture job. I pretty much know I could. Um, it'd be gross. I wouldn't dig it. Uh, it'd be unpleasant. But if there was no other way to close the wound site, if it was more than likely it's going to be a WRL situation... Um, 
which begs the question, you know, why is it here? Because I'm kind of fleshing this out for that type of purpose as I go along. But I don't want to suture if I can get around it. You know, sterile strips, closing the wound up in different ways, maybe even super glue might be an option. Uh, suturing to me is kind of a last resort if I cannot close it up. Let me share a story with you. Um, see this scar right here? I don't know if you can see it. Right here. I cut my hand. My hand was cast. Actually, my whole arm was cast a long time ago, and I cut my finger all the way down to here. You can see that scar goes all the way around. I know I'm no different than you guys. You guys probably got scars too. Anyways, I went to the emergency room and I learned and saw how he had to actually suture the bottom epidermis before he got to the external. Lots of blood. I mean, this thing was bleeding like incredibly. I could not believe how much blood came out of it. And the only way that he could secure it is he stitched the under layer first, then he came out and stitched this top layer. And then he bandaged it up and, you know, let the body take care of the rest. It'll heal up. If you give it nutrition and rest, it'll heal up. And that's what I have. So, yeah, I watched him when he did that. He, he just gave me a local anesthetic when he did it. No, I'm not saying that I know how to do what he did, but I have studied some suturing techniques. I think I could do it. Do I recommend putting it in your level two? I don't know. You make the call. Don't know. Depends. This takes us to a triangular bandage, and I'm running low on time. I'll end with this one. This is a great way to secure an arm that might be broken. It's a standard triangular bandage, military variety. I bought it at a surplus store, and you can see they even have pictures there on how to use it. That's handy. Cool. Olive drab variety, cotton, and it's waterproof packed. Although, like I've said, pretty much every bag you have will get pinholes in it, and it will not be 100% waterproof. This is definitely a good thing to have. They say you can use it as a tourniquet, too, twisting it with a stick. We'll talk a little bit about that. Another option I have. This is the main reason I have it. For a sling. And it's not overly heavy. Not overly bulky either. That's part four. Level two kit. Nothing fancy. And tune in to part five. We're going to end it on a part five. Yeah, it's a big project. But as you can see, there's lots to discuss. Thanks for coming along. A lot more adventures. A lot more philosophy to talk about. See ya. Allie's like totally alerting. I meet ya.